Well, first of all, it's game week. And to uh, tell you the truth, I didn't know if we'd ever make it to game week. And I didn't know if we'd ever make it to our the original first game, our second game, or our third game. And, and to tell you the truth, when we would actually be playing. But we are here. It is game week against Louisiana. Louisiana coming off, you know, a huge win last week against Iowa State. They're ranked number 19th in one poll, 21st in another. Uh, but, man, what a – what a way to start. I mean, when I say a way to start, we, we, we have two cancellations of games. We push back, and here we are sitting here, roughly the third week of what was supposed to be our opening, uh, two games we've missed. And, and here we are going to face a good Louisiana team. But our, myself, our staff, our players, I think everyone that's involved in this football program, you know, we're just itching to go play. We need, we need a football game like therapy. I mean, we, we've got to go out and play. It's been a long training camp, uh, almost to the point where it's, it's almost impossible to keep a concentration level as high as you need it to be to be successful. But we took some time off, and uh, we've regrouped, and, and now our focus is really tuned in on this opening game. We've got an excited group that took the practice field this morning uh, that looked like they, were, they have great intentions, ready to play and play well, and uh, see the Raging Cajuns come in here. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Hey, Coach, this is Marcel here. You named Quad as your starting quarterback for this Louisiana contest. Uh, what did he show during the, the spring and the summer during fall camp to earn the starting spot? Well, he didn't show much during the spring because we didn't have a whole lot of time. And then, of course, our summer was kind of knocked out. So, you know, uh, we, we get back in here, I guess, late July and we start in August. But – Really, it's his understanding of our offensive football team. You know, he had a great opportunity a year ago to be uh, with our offense. You know, he wasn't on the scout team, per se, uh, running opponent plays. He was actually down there backing up Dan Ellington, uh, learning their offensive football team, learning the terminology, the reads. Um, so that put him uh, a little bit ahead of the rest right from the get-go. But he has a really good ability to throw the football, and then he has an ability to run the football uh, probably better than he ever thought he could. Uh, it's probably will be one of his stronger suits that he has, but uh, he, he just separated himself in, in, I think, all aspects of the game. Coach, it's Zach from Channel 2. Well, what uh, piqued your interest, caught your eye, and maybe earned a little bit more respect that you had going in and watching Louisiana, what they did last week that maybe you would not have noticed because you haven't seen the game this year of them? <laughs> Well, I had no idea they were going to have two returns for touchdowns, and that certainly caught our eye. I mean, when you look at those those touchdowns, those difference makers right there, if you have one, it's hard to to overcome uh, if you're the opponent. And if you have two in that game, it's almost impossible. So their special teams really stood out, and it's something we're going to have to keep our eye on, their returners, uh, something that, you know, I thought they, they were good returners, and I thought their personnel was was capable but uh, to see the explosiveness and how they did it against a, a Big 12 opponent that was, you know, had been touted as uh, one of the, the, the higher ranked teams in that league, to go out and do it against them really caught my eye. And to follow up on that, use it as a teaching moment to the guys, because I know you always talk about the three phases of the game, but this is like, this is why we focus and spend so much time on special teams. Well, I mean, as, as a coach, you, you do that anyway. Uh, it's a little easier to get their attention when you see those returns for touchdowns, of course. But, uh, you know, we, we're going to go right, – we'll approach it the same way, just like we always do, and uh, go practice our phases just like we normally do. It doesn't matter if they return five or six of them. I mean, we can easily take away that if we want to push punt that thing or kick it out of bounds or whatever we like to do. But we, we're concentrated on doing what we need to do to solidify our football team to go out there and have a chance to be as successful as possible. Coach Cody Chaffin um, from Fox 5. Are you guys – you feel like you're at a disadvantage not having played yet, or does Louisiana have an advantage because they've already gone out there and played the game and gone through all of that? You know, it all depends on who you ask. I mean, if you go out there and you <laughs> you got a football team that makes a bunch of mistakes, you say, oh, we've got to correct those and we've got another week to do so. We've got one game under our belt uh, before having to see it all happen or all unfold. You know, I don't think so. I think we've been practicing this game of football – the operations of it, the substitutions of it. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time now. I don't think we're 
an undisciplined football team where we're, where we're going to go out there and have a bunch of penalties. So, you know, I, it all depends on who you ask and that. I think we're ready to go regardless whether it would be our second game or our first game. Let's just go play. Coach, on the first depth chart you put out, nine of the 11 starters on defense are either juniors or seniors. So do you think the experience there and having some guys who have even been here your entire time is something you can lean on for a step forward this year on the defensive side? It better be. It certainly better be. I mean, uh, when you have experience, and when I mean good experience, guys that have been in here two and three years and played, we've got a lot of guys on our defensive side of the ball have played a lot of snaps. And, uh, you know, sometimes they played really, really well. Now, the last couple of years, we haven't been as successful as we've needed to be defensively. But I think you're going to see a little bit of difference. Uh, some new styles, some new uh, – so, some variations of things that we can do differently, some – some different personnel in the back end in our safety positions, and also some guys up front that have been doing it the past few years, and then a couple guys that uh, are going to step in there and make some noise for us. So, you know, we've got the experience to be successful. We've just got to go out there and, and, and put it together now. Coach, uh, Marcel again. Discuss the offensive line. You graduated Hunter Atkinson. We returned four guys, including uh, Samarius. Uh, talk about that unit and the continuity that you at least have outside of the spot Hunter occupied? And uh, what do you expect from them just coming into this game? Well, I expect leadership first and foremost. When you have that number of starts up under your belt across the line, um, you should have great leadership from that group. And, you know, with experience becomes uh, probably not the bonehead plays, the missed assignments. And I think we've got a group that has gone out there and probably been in every situation they possibly could have been in whether from playing the past two seasons or going against our defense or whatnot, but they've, they've been in an abundance of uh, situations to make them very, very comfortable in any situation. So um, I, I feel like we've, we've got an intelligent group. I, I feel it, like we've got a, a strong discipline uh, front five, and I think we've got guys that can, can go out there and get the job done. I expect uh, those guys to go do it. I mean, it's – you know, once you've done it, you, that's what you expect to do. And they had a, a pretty good year a year ago. And we do have to replace Hunter Atkinson. But uh, I feel like these guys are, are moving in the right direction to have that replacement and, uh, and stepping forward and continue to do the things very, very well for us. Coach, it's Dave. I wanted to follow up on what Brady asked about the experience on the defensive side. Just get your thoughts on uh, the transfer from Virginia, Chris Moore, what you've seen from him so far in practice. Uh, it's just like I talk about the offensive line. You know, Chris comes in here with, with valuable experience, playing experience. Um, he's seen a lot of things throughout his years of college football and then bring it over and carry it over into our scheme and uh, see him just kind of fit. You know, he's a guy, like I said, he's seen a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different situations. He's a very calm and cool, collected type guy. Uh, I think he tackles well, and I think he, he has the communication skills to put our defense in the right situations, whether it's formation adjustment, but uh, getting us aligned and assigned to be successful. That's what I've seen from him. Hey, Coach. Hey, coach. Uh, this is uh, Sam. Sam. Yeah. yeah. Ask you about your kicking game. You got some new faces. That's an awful lot of new there. And um, – how have you been able to evaluate them? Yeah, well, we've got Noel Ruiz going to take over our place kicking. Uh, he, he's a transfer coming in here. Once again, lots of experience. Um, very good kicker. Uh, he is coming in here with great concentration. Uh, his experience, his, uh, his knowledge. When I say knowledge, is not getting overwhelmed or having a tense moment. He's been in those pressure-packed uh, moments before. And he stepped in here and done a nice job as, as, as far as our place kicking. Uh, I'm so excited to watch him go out there. And then Michael Hayes will take over our punting duties. And Michael, he, to tell you the truth, we actually recruited him as a kicker. And then he has just developed into the, the better punter that we have on our team. Uh, through a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. Uh, he's a guy that can do a lot of different things. He can, he can rugby punt. He can boom it just, you know, from a traditional punting stance. He can both do it right or left with it. So, well, you know, we have a – he's a weapon for us. He is a weapon for us. And we have, uh, we have some experienced long snappers coming back.
John, you mentioned the experience a little bit earlier. I counted 39 freshmen. What's your philosophy about letting some of the younger guys rotate and get involved? Obviously, they've got to earn it in practice first, but is there a comfort level that you need to feel, you or your coordinators, before you start putting some of the younger guys in? Well, it depends on what position you're talking about. You know, if you're, if you're talking about turning around and handing the ball off to a running back, you know, they, they've been doing that their whole life. You know, they, they probably can go out there and do it and do it pretty successful because uh, that's something they're just accustomed to doing. Uh, and probably next, it could be a wide out. You know, if, if you're in situations where you got, uh, I think, guys that can read coverages and get themselves in the right route running uh, positions, then, then certainly they can play. But they have to, they have to have uh, established that sense of trust from our staff to them and myself for us to put them out there. I, it, it's, this is not an, it's not an experiment. Uh, if they've warranted the playing time and we do have the knowledge and trust that, that we feel we need to put them in, then they'll go play. But if not, they'll, they'll stand right over there and watch just like, uh, just like a lot of others will that don't have that, uh, you know, that confidence or that experience level. Who are some of the guys that have stood out, some of the freshmen, redshirt freshmen or sophomores? Oh, I mean, Tay Lane, you know, and Tavius Lane starting safety right there. Redshirt freshman, golly. I mean, he is a, a turnover, uh, just he creates them. He's a short tackler. He does the things, you know, there in the back end that I think uh, we haven't had uh, the ability to do the last few years. And, and that's a really, really good, t- good thing. Uh, you got Jamar Thrash at the wide receiver position, another redshirt guy. So, you know, there, there, there are several guys that we have. And uh, like I said, we'll see where they all step up and how it plays out this Saturday. But uh, there's a lot of new faces you can see out there making plays for us. Coach, you've been successful in season openers, especially last year, but it, it just throughout your career, having guys get so hyped up, how do you control that? Do you need to control that? Can they can they spend all their energy in the first ten minutes if they if they get too hyped? I don't know. Have you ever seen me coach? You no, know, I'm probably the most hyped man out there for every ball game. So, you know, I don't think it has anything to do about whether you how hyped you are when you can go play or not. I mean, unless I'm sky high, ready to go, it doesn't matter <laughs> what happens. And I think it's the same for players. I mean, you want that adrenaline. You need that energy. And, and that's, that's some of the more memorable moments that, that we have as players of stepping out there and being maybe the first guy on the kickoff or it's my first snap as a tight end and I've got a down block and you've got all that pressure and that adrenaline just built up and ready to explode. Uh, so it, it doesn't have any effect. You know, I, I say let them go out there and let, them, let it just hang out because – We've been doing this for a long time now, since uh, I guess uh, July 25th or something like that. It has been a long, long time. I hope to see some doggone energy uh, just explode out there because I, I am sitting behind this desk and it has been a long time coming for me to, to get to this game deck. Any other questions for Coach? Yeah, speaking of the difficulties with COVID. What have you in particular had to do or ask the team to do differently, either through what the Sun Belt has advised through the university? I mean, everybody kind of has to deal with the very lightly walking on eggshells and how they approach everything. Is there anything in particular that has made it either easier or been more of a challenge for you personally? I don't think there's anything about COVID that's been easy. Uh, you can go and you can ask any coach around the country. It's a difficult situation that we've been placed in. Our players have been placed in, you know, to come in and get screened every day, to get tested once a week, to shove a, uh, a swab Q-tip up your nose and, uh, and wait for the results. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of things, but nothing about it has been easy. I think our team has, uh, because of our athletic training staff, has just become accustomed to doing these things now. It is actually the norm. So now they expect it, uh, know what's coming, and they manage it very, very well. Early on, no one wanted to do it. No one wanted to, quote, unquote, test themselves for COVID. And it was a very un- uncomfortable situation that we were all in. But now, you know, we've been doing it for so long. We've become accustomed to doing it. 
it's a uh, it's still an an ongoing process that we face every single day uh but it's something we understand we have to do to play this great game and we will continue to do it to the best of our ability and give us the chance to go out there and, and play this game hopefully the student body the band and everything that makes college football so good will be allowed to participate is there any word that you have in terms of when that's going to take place or is it just going to take a national an announcement before we, we can get back to normal i have no idea i have no idea what i am is a, I'm, a, I'm a football coach i'm leading the georgia state panthers and you know uh that that's hard enough in itself and i'll let everybody else figure out the other stuff but uh, we'll follow the guidelines and the precautions and the, necessary means to keep playing this game that we love so much and hopefully uh sooner later uh, sooner than later it'll all become back to normal because uh, we are we are missing it and when you're when you're involved in sports like i am and you have been for your entire life it uh it doesn't seem real and right now to tell you the truth you know just watching these games on television it still doesn't seem real to me um that these teams are going out there and there's maybe you know I don't know, 10, 15,000 fans. Some universities aren't even allowing, you know, anyone in the stadium. I mean, so that that's a little odd to me that, that players can go out there and play, but their parents can't come in the stadium and watch them play. So it still doesn't seem very real to me. Hopefully it'll 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 change. Coach, is that Sam? Has that been the toughest part of these last few months for you, for you personally? And I know you've had to spend some time away and get away because you had to, not because you wanted to. What's been the most difficult part of this for you personally? The uncertainty. You know, when everything, I, I'm a football coach. You, you have days marked down. You have schedules you go by. Uh, a lot of things don't change from your scheduling or, or from, you know, things you've done your entire life. But the uncertainty of not knowing, uh, not knowing who, who you're going to have to practice that day not knowing when your first game might be. Uh, it, it, a lot of unknowns, a lot of unknowns. And we still have unknowns. I mean, we're going to test 72 hours before this first ball game, and I'm going to hold my breath, and I'm going to sit there until about 9.30 that night, you know, just hoping that uh, everything's going to fall into place and we don't have, uh, you know, something crazy happen. So, you know, when, when you're a coach and you have everything planned, it's uh, the uncertainty that, that scares you the most.